What is up guys, Roby Tech here, and the question for today is, can you air cool a 12900K? Well, we're gonna find out right now. What's up guys? Uh, welcome to a very special episode. This is raw, there's no script, there's nothing else. Today it's just about me and you experimenting with what I think is potentially the best air cooling system you could build right now. Now, I know we this is for a couple months and all that et cetera stuff, but in terms of uh, just raw power under air cool, I had to see, is it possible to actually air cool a 12900K? So today, we are actually not only going to try and air cool it, with the system that we built, which you can check out the whole live stream where we did some of this stuff already, but also going to live bench uh, bench test it. Then we're gonna show you how to undervolt it. So if you wanted to get better temps, if this works, uh, and then also how to overclock it. So the hope is by the end of this show, we'll actually have a undervolted overclock 12900K with an RTX 3090 Ti. Now you might be looking at this and you're saying, Roby, what makes this so special? Like, why do you think this is even possible? I mean, we know that the 12900K runs like at the temperature of the sun um, or even hotter than the sun. So what makes you think that you could use uh, something so, I don't know, <laughs> breezy to, uh, to cool this thing down? Well, I mean, what I have right here is probably the best potential solution to actually cool a 12900K. And so inside of this, we actually have a 12900K, believe it or not. The cooler though, this is the part that's special. It's like you might be actually, you might be saying, hey, why are you not using uh, the D series? We're actually gonna use the Noctua NHU-12A. This is the latest um, cooler from Noctua. It's only 120 millimeters. Uh, but the other thing too is the cooling coming off of this, like based on other specs and stuff that we've seen is actually this is outperforming even some of the largest coolers. Now you might be asking, hey Ruby, why not the Noctua DH15? And the other thing too you might be asking is what the hell are all of these acronyms that you continue to throw around? These, these are actual coolers. The data is showing the Noctua NHU-12A is actually outperforming the DH15. So we are going to use this new cooler. It's only 120 millimeters, so it is a smaller uh, smaller cooling, uh, sorry, smaller fan that we're using here. But the thing is, is that we think this can actually do the job. Now we can always switch to the D15 if we needed to, um, but we wanted to see, hey, we're gonna test it with this. So let's talk about the specs that are inside this machine, the test air-cooled machine and why I chose them. So right now inside of this, we got the Intel 12900K. For the cooler, we're using that Noctua NHU-12A. For the motherboard, we're using the Asus Tough G uh, Gaming Z690. So this is the DDR5 version. The reason we're using the Tough is because Asus sent us the 3090 Ti. We wanted to pair them together, um, so I thought that would be kind of fun. It would, you know, in terms of air cooling and stuff like that, it's not like I was planning on doing it like crazy overclocking or anything like that. So knowing that what I was limitation, this board was more than good enough. For storage, we're using the CK8 Fire CUDA 531 terabyte, great OS drive. So if we're gonna make it fast, it's like even though even more fast. If this is successful, and say for instance you wanted to build this, I wanted to make sure there was a big game drive on there. So we also threw in like a four terabyte CK8 Fire CUDA 530, having nothing to do with air cooling whatsoever, but. Um, we also just wanted to, hey, I was like, hey, why not? There you go, a little fun. For the GPU, we're using the Asus Tough RTX 3090 Ti. Uh, the case is the other part of this. One of the best, if not the best air cooling cases on the market, uh, the Fractal Torrent. So if anything, it's got those massive 180 millimeter fans at the front. Uh, you've got one, I've got three 140s to cool the GPU at the back. Uh, at the bottom, and then of course we've got a Noctua uh, AFF12, um, sorry, yeah, AF12 sitting in the rear, uh, basically to make sure that we have all of the potentially awesome cooling that we could get. For the PSU, we're using that Asus RG Thor 1000 P2. This is their newest one. It actually has the new 24 pin, pin connector for the 3090 Ti, which is why you're not seeing any cables dangling here. And then for the extensions, Robbie's using Asia Horse Dual EPS Black Mix. Now, one other thing that is different about this build versus many of the other the Roby Tech builds is that uh, my audience voted live on the show and we decided to do no RGB. So there's actually only two LEDs, those on the motherboard and the single one that's sitting on the tough. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move over to the bench. You now know the system. We're gonna move over to the bench. I'm gonna show you all the tools that I needed to basically do the testing, etc., that we've done. Uh, and then from there, uh, we'll, start, we'll start playing with it and see what we can actually do. Is it going to work? Let's find out. Welcome to the bench marking part of the Roby Tech Studio. Don't worry, we actually only moved 
one section over, but I, I like to pretend like we're bigger now. But anyway, here we are, we're here. Let's take a look at the screen. Um, so here we are, we're uh, running Windows 11. Obviously that's the best uh, setup for uh, 12900KS. You get Thread Director and all that sort of jazz. It's not what this video is about, but let's talk about what I'm gonna be using to test and then potentially undervolt depending on how well this experiment goes. So, uh, and don't worry, right now you're seeing that the, uh, the system is actually open. We will be putting the glass on. We're not gonna be cheating or anything like that. We're just, right now, I just figured we'd get one test to see where things were. Uh, stuff that I have installed and set up here is we've got the Intel, the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. Uh, this is what I can do to do things like undervolting. I can also do this for basically uh, overclocking as well. Uh, I've got the CPU ID hardware monitor. Uh, this is their, the pro version. There actually is a free version. We use the pro version. So yeah, it's up to you if you wanna do the same thing. Both of these utilities right here are free. Uh, I've got Cinebench R20. Again, you can download that for free. This is just a test for stability and stuff like that as we kind of start to mess around with clock speeds. A to 64 business, this is what I'm gonna do to just essentially stress test. What it'll do, it allows me to set the CPU load to 100%. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just see what our CPU temperatures are and how our Noctua U12A uh, actually performs. Then finally, we got 3D Mark. So if, if, big if, if this is a normal size video, uh, if everything goes well, we'll actually get to see what we're able, capable of doing using this cooler in this awesome case and hopefully pull off some really great numbers given we've got a 3090 Ti in here from Asus as well. So these are the tools I'm gonna to use. Let's just start first though. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop up here and uh, open up ADA64. So get that started. Now I don't need to add any other things to this to make this run or anything like that. All I'm really doing is just testing temp. So, uh, and I can see all that just right within here. So I'm gonna run over here to this. You can see that we'll be able to see the temperature and we're gonna go ahead and hit start. So here we go, we're starting the test. Now this is open. I'm hoping it's not terrible, but we'll see where this gets to and then we'll close it up and see how much worse or better it gets uh, when we close this out. Cause this case is obviously made for air cooling. Uh, so just kicking things off, we'll let this go for about 10 minutes uh, and then see where we kind of end up uh, after a soak. So one thing you do want to know, just in case you're interested with the build is how loud is this case when we are custom cooling it. So I'm gonna go silent here. You guys can see I've got a decibel meter just to kind of show you where things are. But so we're doing in here from here right now, this is me talking. You can see that I'm pretty loud, 91, but listen, here we go. I'll go completely silent. It's actually pretty quiet here. Here you go. So from a decibel standpoint, we're looking at about 64. So about the, the, the side, the length, or sorry, the uh, volume of, a little bit less of a volume than a mouse click. It's, it's not quiet, quiet. Overall, if this was like off to the side or you were in headphones or even just gaming on your own, it doesn't actually get that loud. And we are doing this, this, I don't think gaming would be at this level, but I wanted to give you up there. And remember, if you're interested in building this PC, all the parts are listed down below, uh, even if you didn't want to do like a 3090 Ti. But anyway, okay, so, uh, you know, it's been just over seven minutes. Uh, as you can see, I actually threw the cover back on because what I was essentially seeing, and you can zoom, we'll just zoom up here real quick so you guys can see this. Um, so you're seeing that for the most part, temperatures are pretty much jumping between 82 and 77. So the U12A is doing an absolutely amazing job of actually keeping this completely cool. So we have zero issues whatsoever uh, in terms of running this all together. So we're we're actually really good. Um, now, one of the things I wanna to talk to you guys about is like, you know, 80 is fine. I mean, if you really wanted to do 80, one of the things I wanna, I kind of highlight here is that even though now that we know that this is completely capable of being custom air, uh, sorry, custom air cooled, of, it is custom air cooled. Uh, now that we know that we're capable of air cooling this, um, we can actually do some things to bring the temps down without actually um, causing any issues whatsoever with the overall performance. And the way I'm gonna use that is why I have R20 and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this. Okay, we got that stopped. It's gonna get really quiet. It's like literally like dead, dead quiet. Now you might be asking, hey Roby, what's the temperature in the room that you're in? It's actually 24 uh, degrees Celsius inside of here. So we don't have a terribly, it's actually rather warm uh, inside the room just because we've been doing testing. Um, but yeah, so we're not doing anything like, I don't have massive amounts of air conditioning or anything like that. Um, just in case you're curious if this, if you wanna run this experiment yourself. Okay, so we got that shut down. Just to show you something, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close A to 64. I'm gonna go ahead and open up CPU ID. And then what we'll do is we'll just show you um, 
how things are running. So we have, so like what a couple things I'm gonna show you is here, we'll look at the temperature packages. This is basically where things were as we were going. Uh, here's our CPU, P cores and E cores. Um, so top ones are the P cores, the bottom ones are the E cores. So you can see what our, our, our uh, performance stays at. Then I'm gonna run is just a normal Cinebench R20. So give you an idea as a benchmark. So let's open this up and you can do R23. I just like R20, but uh, let's go to R20, close it here. And then we'll hit, we're gonna hit run. And here you go. So we're gonna see what our temperatures and stuff are. So it's gonna pop up a little bit. So there's our temperatures as we're going through here. 79, 80, looking down here at the clocks where we got four nine, but for the most part we've hit five one. So everything here is working right now as intended. We're up to 82, 83, 84, but still very, very manageable for air cooling. I mean, dude, this is, I did not think this would be this good. There it is right there, 84, and we got a score right there of 10, 481, so 10, 481. Now watch this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize this and I'm gonna run my Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. So here we are, this is just a base stock stuff good to go right now. And then you can do this too. This is absolutely fine. There's no issue with whatsoever doing this. So we'll run this up here. Now I'm going to go to advanced tuning. Now, if you get an error, sometimes you get an error. It says, Hey, I can't run it. Uh, because, uh, there's a restriction on memory. Uh, you can just go to advanced, turn that off. It's not a big deal. It's just something that it does. You're, you're totally okay. And then this will run without an issue. Just follow the prompts and turn the one thing off that you have. And it's pretty straight, uh, straightforward. So we'll go to advanced tuning. I'm going to hit, I agree. Yes. I'm overclocking. Now check this out. Let's go and change our offset. We're going to change it to negative negative 0.05. Okay. So this is just, I'm all, I'm core voltage on, uh, under volting by negative 0.5. Now hit, let's hit apply, continue. And now I'm going to close this. I'm not, ooh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually close it. So shut it all, down all the way. So that, so that's set. Okay. So I'm going to close the XTU all the way. Reopen now. Here we go. You saw what it got before. I'm going to bring this up again. Now watch, here we go. Run. Let's check out our temps. So it's now running. 74, this is now, these are the new temps. Remember, this is what we had on the old ones. 74, 75, 74, 75, 75, 74, 75. Same performance here, 49, everything here is fine. 75, 76, and boom. Okay, look at that, 10, 5, 16. So actually, our score went up, the performance went up, while our actual uh, heat went down. So we were running now air cooled 75 degrees with a negative 0.05. Now we could do this again. Let's just, just for the sake of fun. So let's go here again, open, uh, minimize this, go to Intel extreme tuning utility. So we're going to do negative 0.75. Now you can, uh, and again, one of the things you can do, I'm not going to do it a ton here, but the thing is you can continually undervolt until you can find what your uh, voltage offset is here. So we're gonna go here at 0.75. Okay, and hit apply on that one. Okay, so now we're at negative 0.75. Oop, oop. In this case, we actually got a crash. So we got a crash on that. So that's just showing us one thing. So let's go ahead and restart the system. Oh, wait, uh, yeah, I did, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that was my own fault. I did negative 0.750. That's, that's my bad. I didn't read the numbers. I wanted to do a negative 0.075, not pink. I really undervolted that. That was not gonna work at all. Uh, so this is, the worst case is, is that you end up with something like this. It gets unstable, you restart. The good thing is, is that the uh, XTU uh, is not writing anything permanently to your BIOS. Um, so you're, you're good to go here. Uh, if your thing stays stable, it stays at those settings. You're, you're good to save and, and be good there. So we're gonna get back into our OS here. Okay, so we're all good back to where we were. Continue. So there it goes. It says, hey, it, it unexpectedly, I agree. Let's not be stupid. Okay, so now we're going to go to negative 0.075. Sorry, not what I did, which was stupid. Okay, hit apply. Continue. Okay, obviously we're fine there. Okay, so we're at 0.075. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit close on that. I'm gonna go ahead and close it here too. It just, uh, now you can leave it open if you want to, it's not a big deal. This is just to make sure that we get the best possible performance. Now all this stuff is reset. So you're just gonna see temps. Right now the temps are sitting at 57. So let's do the run again. Okay, so we're at 60, 68, 69. And so again, you are hitting performance, but we're gonna see how low we can go and keep our temperatures at the lowest. Right now we're hitting 72. Remember we were at 75, 76. We're at 72 right now and boom. 
Okay, now we got 10.508. So we actually saw small decrease in performance there from the previous version and in only a save of about two degrees. So I would say at this point in time, if, if I mean, if I was gonna keep this, I would go back up to 0.5 because I, you know, for two, I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose performance. Uh, and it feels like that's a pretty good safe place to be. Now, here's where we can actually have some fun though. So we're gonna reopen this up. Okay, let's go back to our advanced tuning, agree. Okay, so we're gonna go back up to 0.5, apply. Uh, and then now what I've got down here is I've got some other settings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my turbo boost window all the way up to max, hit apply this. Okay, now, so I've now, I've got pretty safe temperatures. I've actually got headroom to play with. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm upping uh, some performance things to make things better. Okay, so here is all my clock speeds. This is everything from a clock speed. Let's, just for fun, let's go to an all core clock of 5.0. So I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go down here and go to five, we're gonna go, we're gonna go 5.0 on everything. So I'm gonna go up to 5.0 here. So everything I've got now, every core is at 5.0. And so I've got, now we'll have a 5.0 all core and then I'm gonna go here, let's go to three nine and make all the P cores match too. Okay, so I'm gonna apply this. Okay, so we're good there. I'm gonna keep this open because we're gonna play around with this a little bit more, but we are technically now overclocking our undervolted 12900K while air-cooled. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna run our Cinebench R20. Here it is right here. Bring up our stuff. We're gonna hit run. Okay, so we're now over, we're now overclocked and undervolted. Okay, there goes temps. Okay, we're at 79, so we're back, we're close to where we were, still four degrees, but we're getting better performance at this point in time, 80 degrees. And look at those performance, everything here, by the way, all at five. So there goes, everything was at five and everything here was at three nine. Okay, there it is, look at that, 10,690. So we've now got five core all the way across and 10,690. Let's just, I'm not gonna play P core as much anymore. Let's just, for the sake of it, let's go to a five one. 5-1 all core overclock, continue. So essentially at this point in time, we're now doing better. We're at the boost, like above boost at this point in time of a stock on all cores. Okay, so one more time, let's give this a run. I'm, I'm guessing this will be still warm, but manageable. Remember, we got 100, 105 degrees we can run this at. So we're at 87, still sub 90, 92, okay. So we, got, so we still actually have some room. 92, 93, and look at that, 10, 851. So that's 10851. Now, could go back to five, that'd be absolutely fine. Uh, again, 10851 now with basically with air cooling, overclocked and undervolted. I think that would be about, so this would be about the best that I would go uh, on this. Now we are gonna do some, uh, some follow-up videos uh, just to kind of have some fun. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to run 3D Mark. Um, so let's go ahead and pop open 3D Mark here. Uh, we were at 21,000, I think we had 21,490 uh, was our original one. We'll, we can go back to stock and just run that uh, previous. I think we actually have a number of that. I, I showed a recording of that uh, earlier. So we can show you what our earlier score was. Now we're gonna bring this up and let's see what our new score is. And then we're gonna bring this up. So here we're gonna run Time Spy. We're gonna see if this is successful uh, and go from there. So let's see what we actually end up with here in a minute. So it's interesting, so I'm just, I mean, this is still running, but one of the things is, is that right now, there is actually almost no sound. I just want to show you. Forty-seven, and we're in the middle of a demo. Like this is in the middle of uh, 3D Mark. So probably, if you want to say like, what's it going to be like when you're gaming when overclocked and air cooled? Yay! That's crazy. And there it is, twenty-one two forty-six. Let's just compare our results online real quick. You are better than 99% of results. There it is. Premium Gaming PC in 2020, 1971. Uh, RTX 3090 Ti, Core i9, 12.9. Look at that, look at that. Clock frequency 5.135. Yes. Uh, and all while, um, all while uh, running it uh, with uh, overclocking and undervolting on air cooling. Okay, so guys, we're done. Uh, wow. So we are gonna be doing a follow-up video to this, so stay tuned. We're gonna be doing one uh, air-cooled versus AIO-cooled versus custom water-cooled. So we just got that system from Origin, which is a custom, complete custom water-cooled. We just gotta put together a similar uh, AIO-cooled 12900K. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the results between them. So how much can I actually push it versus what the uh, Noctua NH-U12A did? Now, I'm curious. 
It's not just about what I think. What do you think? What did you think of this video? Is there stuff that we could have done better? Is there things that you wish we would have added to something like this? So when we do our next comparison, uh, we do it better for you. So leaving us that feedback, perhaps you could actually win some cash in the process. And all you gotta do is make sure you like and you subscribe. And at the same time also that you leave a quality comment down in the comment section below. Things that you might answer might be stuff like, hey, what did you like about the video? Were you surprised by the results? What did we do wrong? Is there something we could have improved? All those things are things that we could have, uh, we could use and what I consider a quality comment. Things that I don't consider a quality comment. Can I have this PC? Can you give me a free PC? Can I have a free Noctua NH blah? You know, anything like that. Not something lame like that. Now, make sure that you leave an email address for us to reach out to you in your YouTube profile, because that's the way that we basically will email you and confirm that you're a winner. Now, we're gonna be choosing one lucky comment from down below to win $25. It's just cash worldwide, as long as you can take Venmo or PayPal. So we'd love to do this. This is how we grow, and this is how we make a better experience here on Robitech. Well, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we do videos like this here on the channel. Also, uh, if you're looking for things like, uh, if you have questions about this, you wanna talk about uh, overclocking or undervolting, etc., then join our Discord server, discord.gg slash robytech. It's a great community filled of other tech and PC enthusiasts who love to answer and talk about those very same things and actually answer those questions. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytechdeals.com or at robytechdeals.twitter on Twitter. Uh, both of those are where our guy Tom is basically scouring the internet to get you all of the latest information uh, on uh, GPU availability, CPU availability, cheap tech, cheap video games, etc. So all of that stuff. So are you? did you know that we have a live channel? In fact, we stream three times a week and we built this and benched this live as well. So check down in the description below for Roby Tech Live. Uh, you can uh, like and also subscribe and know when we go live here on YouTube uh, and build things like this and bench things like this as well. Finally, guys, you can follow me and my team on all the socials at Roby Tech pretty much everywhere. We hope you really enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye, guys.